Hey guys, it's Jack from JRP Custom Paint and Furniture. Welcome to my channel and welcome back to those who have been here before. This 20 year old bookshelf is this week's project. I got it off a close friend of mine and I'm um, just gonna try and do something different with it. So, we're gonna start by cleaning it and sanding it. Now, I've just started by quickly having a sand on the side because I wanted to see how many of these scratches that were in this unit were actually going to come out before I put in a lot of effort. So as you can see, there's a lot of dents, a lot of scratches, but this is 20 years old. So it looks pretty good for that age. So I've got some Timbermate wood filler and I'm just going to fill the holes on the side of this unit just with my finger just to make sure they're nice and smooth before I start properly sanding the piece. And as you can see, there was a lot of damage to this. So we've had to use a lot of timber mate, but that's okay. So we're going to start this piece. The vision I have in mind is raw shelves. Now there is a very thick coating of varnish on this. So I've started out with a 80 grit sandpaper on my detail sander because I want to get right into the corners. These shelves can't be removed on this piece. So if I could easily remove them, it would be so much simpler to sand them back and then reattach them. However, they can't be removed. So I have to sand them fully inside the piece. So I need a real detailed sander in order to be able to get right into the corners here. I've switched over to my orbital sander because I feel that that's a little bit more powerful because it was taking me ages to get through the varnish. So hopefully this will be a little bit faster. I've brought back the wood on the shelf to raw, but now I've got to deal with the corners here. So I've just got a piece of sandpaper. I'm using 80 grit again, but I folded it over and I'm trying to get deep into the corners of this shelf. This is actually proving to be a lot harder and take a lot longer than I expected. While I'm doing this hand sanding, I'm trying to make sure I go to the grain as much as possible. The more you go against the grain, the more damage you're going to do to the wood that's going to be difficult to get out. 
So try and keep to the grain as much as possible. Now that I've finished with the corners on this first shelf, I've grabbed my orbital sander again and I've put on 120 grit sandpaper. So I started with 80 and now I've moved up to 120. The 80 is actually quite coarse, so I want to smooth the wood out now. Now that I've finished with my 120 grit, I'm moving up to 180 grit. So this is gonna smooth the shelf out even more and give it that butter feel. So once again, I've started with 80, I've gone up to 120 and now I'm at 180. Because it took me ages of sanding just to do the one shelf, I've now moved on to my digger's paint stripper and I'm going to apply that to try and take off as much of the varnish as I possibly can. So I'm just applying that quite thickly with a foam brush and we will leave it for about 30 minutes or so with some cling wrap over the top of it and that will hold the moisture in and keep the product activating. Now this digger's paint stripper takes around about 30 minutes or so to really start activating. So I've covered it with cling wrap and as you can see here, if I just rub my finger across the top of the cling wrap, you can see how it's lifting the varnish. That's what we want to see. It won't lift everything, but if we can get rid of some of it, that's what we want. So now I'm just pulling back the cling wrap after about 30 minutes and I've got a scraper and I'm just going to try and get rid of some of this top coat and that will hopefully make the sanding process a lot quicker. Once you've removed enough of the stripper, I've got some Digger's methylated spirits. Now I'm just going to pour that on the shelf and use a paper towel just to try and pretty much deactivate the stripper. Because if you leave that stripper on there, it will keep working and it will eventually go hard and make it even harder to get off. So we want to deactivate that stripper and that's what the finished product looks like so far. And once again, I'm back to sanding. So hopefully now that I've stripped a lot of the varnish off, it's not going to take me as long as it did with the first shelf. And remember, we have four shelves to get in double-sided. So we want to speed up the project as much as possible.
Now, fast forward to all the shelves being sanded, which took me forever. We are now onto sanding the rest of the unit. So the rest of the unit isn't going down to raw, it's only getting a thorough scuff sand. A scuff sand is where you're roughing up the surface so that you have something for the paint to adhere to. So now that all the scuff sanding has been done on the whole unit, I'm just quickly going over the whole unit again with a 240 grit sandpaper, just to make sure that my raw areas are beautiful and smooth. And then I will begin covering them with some tape and some plastic so that we can protect them and then we can start painting. So I'm cleaning now just to get rid of all the sanding debris. We don't want any of the paint to get caught in that because it'll provide a lot of bumps on the surface. So we want to remove as much as possible. While I'm masking up, I just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who has subscribed to my channel. And if you haven't, please click that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or any comments at all, please write them below and I'll do my best to get back to you with any help you need. Now that we have protected all the raw wood that we want protected, I'm using Vinzinsa Bullseye 123 Primer just to give this unit a good solid two coats of primer. Now we're going a white on this unit with the raw shelves, so we really need to make sure that all of this wood is properly covered with a primer so that we don't have any bleed through coming through on the wood. So all I'm doing now is giving the primer a really good stir to make sure that it's mixed well and then I'll grab one of my filters and I'll start filling up my spray gun. Now I'm using a Wagner spray gun here. Um, Wagner is uh, by far the best spray gun I've used to date. Um, I haven't yet attempted using a gravity fed spray gun or a H, I think it's called a HPLV spray gun. 
um, that will be my next trial. But uh, at the moment, I have been using my Wagner for pretty much every single project I've done of late. And I love it. It saves so much time. It's so much fun to use. And it's a really great product for anyone looking for an affordable, great spray gun. And here we go with our first coat of primer. So as you can see, we're just going nice and smoothly down the unit. We wanna make sure we overlap each run of spray by about 30%, and that way you get a good solid coverage on your piece. Apologies for my daughter there. Now we're going into the second round of priming. So we want to make sure that our piece is really properly covered and ready for paint. In between each coat of paint, it's always good to give your piece a quick light sand. Now I'm using a 240 grit sandpaper and I'm just going over the unit lightly to remove any bumps that is in the paint or on the paintwork. It also gives you a chance to look at your paintwork and see if anything needs to be fixed up before you move on to your main colour. I've got my Wagner spray gun out and we're going in for the first coat of colour. Now this unit has been sanded back nice and smooth so it's ready to go and now we've got the spray gun out and we've filled it with a beautiful white that I got from Bunnings as a mist tint actually so I don't have a colour name but I bought a big four litre tin of it from Bunnings. Um, obviously dirt cheap because it was a mist tint but it's a beautiful beautiful clear white. When I'm doing the main colour, I always try to do a minimum of two coats of paint. Sometimes you require three if you've missed a spot or it's just not giving you the full coverage, but I generally always try to do a minimum of two coats. So now that I've done my two coats of white on the unit, I'm using the leftover white paint and I'm diluting it with 50% water to create a paint wash for these shelves. 
I want to remove the yellowness out of these shelves. So this paint wash will make them lighter and make them more brighter and the grain a little bit more noticeable on the shelf. So as you can see, I'm using the diluted mixture and I'm painting it on just with a standard paintbrush and then I'll wipe it back with a clean cloth. Make sure when you're doing this that you always wipe back to the grain because you will get streak marks when you're wiping it back. And the good thing about a paint wash is you can always redo it as many times as you want until you reach your desired colour. And as you can see, after I'm wiping it back, if you look at the shelf below, you'll see the difference between the yellow tone wood and the paint wash wood. So we have this paint wash to do on all four shelves to give that same color tone. And now I'm gonna cover the entire unit with Monocell's water-based clear wood varnish in satin. Now going back to what this unit looked like beforehand to now. It's elegant, it's clean, it's got beautiful paint washed wood shelves and a stark white backdrop and it will match any decor in any home. It's a great quick flip on an old unit that just needed a little bit of TLC. So I hope you enjoyed this guys and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, bye.